Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. This is a video for my student, Joseph, who wants to understand what is greatest integer function and how do we work with it. So I've taken three examples. Rather, we'll first discuss the characteristics, also sketch a graph for greatest integer function. Then we'll find domain for two questions in which greatest integer function has been used. That will help us to understand the function better. So what is this greatest integer function? It is written in two different ways. One, like I've shown, uh, where you see this uh, bracket kind of like this, right? Do you see that? It indicates that we have to take a lower value. So it is also called floor function. Basically, it is greatest integer less than the value of x. So x is all real numbers, right? So where x belongs to real numbers. Now, at times, we also write this function as square brackets, right? So we also write this as square brackets. Sometimes we also write it kind of uh, double bars. So all are same symbol. They are all for greatest integer function. Now, to give you an idea, if I have, a, so let me use this. It makes it clear that we are looking for a lower value, right? It may call, you may call greatest integer, but it's greatest integer less than the value. We have a ceiling function also. So that's why I'm using this uh, nomenclature. So if I have something like, uh, let's say 3.14, right? Then its value will be taken as three. So the integer, the greatest integer is three in this, right? If I have, let us say, we can use either of these conventions, 0 0.25, for example, then that is equal to just 0, right? Now, if I have a negative value, for example, if I have negative 1.3, for example, what is this equal to? Now, in this particular case, when it is negative 1, then, then it is actually greatest integer here is, is 0, right? So, so we'll just look into this, the greatest integer, and then work it out. So before getting there, let me put a dot, dot, dot here. We'll try to understand from the, the graph itself, right? It'll make more sense. So I'm just sketching the graph of the function here for greatest integer function. So clearly, we know something that if I have a greatest integer function value as 1, it is going to be just number 1, correct? But if I have 1.1, it just remains at, at 1. It switches to 2 when the integer value becomes 2. Perfect. So, so initially, if say this is, these are our points, like 1, 2, 3, let's take only 3 values. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Let's say this is 1, 2, 3. Let's take 4. And here we have 1, 2, I mean 3 and 4. Okay. So the idea here is that when I write something 0 0.5 then 0 is my integer so this 0 is taken care of but as soon as I write 1 then it jumps and it comes to this place do you get an idea right so and then up to 2 we are at 1 but as soon as we get 2 it again jumps to 2 and likewise it goes in steps and therefore, we also call it step function. Okay. Now, looking into the trend, it seems that it should be kind of like this. So, if you are confused about this situation, which is, we are saying, 
what is it at minus 1.3 so beyond this so it is kind of like this do you see that so if it is minus 0 point anything then it is minus 1 you get an idea right so that is how it is so this value minus 1.3 is actually minus 2 now that gives us a property also that is to say that if we have something like this that is to say if I have a negative value here then we have to take the integer value and take away one more from this it's on the left side you get an idea right? it's, it's like the left side of this okay so that makes sense so that is how it is so so we just move and sketch it kind of like this so that is how it is so it is called a step function as you can see now for this particular function let's write domain and range now domain here is x belongs to real numbers all real numbers as far as the range is concerned what is it so y belongs to integers so all integers it could be 1 it could be 2 and so on or it could be minus 1 right minus 2 and so on so the range is all integers I hope that part is clear now once that is clear let's move on and then find domain and range of functions involving greatest integer function is it okay so now we'll look into how to find domain of f of x which is equal to 1 over square root of x minus greatest integer function and then we have a quadratic form of this within square root correct you can actually pause the video answer this question and then look into my suggestions right now let us try to find domain of the function f of x equals to 1 over square root of x minus greatest integer. Now in this case we know denominator should be should be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be 0 because you cannot divide by 0 and there is square root right. So, so that makes it it should be greater than. So when I say denominator I really mean to say inside that square root function which is x minus greatest integer function that should be greater than that should be greater than zero that's what we mean right so this should be greater than zero now we could not have x less than zero to make it possible so that means the value of x has to be greater than 0 but now you will understand one thing that is to say if if x is an integer if x is an integer in that case greatest integer function is equal to x if x belongs to integer right correct but if it is not an integer then I mean other real numbers x minus greatest integer function is actually greater than 0 if x is not an integer and and x is positive right x is greater than 0 does it make sense to you right so since you know that if we have a let's get back to some example if I have greatest integer value of 2 point let's say 3 then that is equal to just 2 now if I have x minus 2.3 and x is 2.3 then we get 2.3 minus 2 which is 0 0.3 which is greater than zero you get my point right so that's how it is however if you have just 2.0 that is also equal to 2 so in that case it will be like 2.0 minus 2.0 I should write 2 actually 
this is equal to zero. We cannot have zero in the denominator. You get an idea, right? So from this logic, what becomes the domain of this function? Let's write it down. So the domain is that x should be greater than zero. So we get the domain, which is x belongs to real numbers, right? Where x is greater than zero, but x should not be integers. Do you understand? Or x should not belong to integers. So at times, we also say that x belongs to real numbers minus integers. Sometimes we use this, right? Real numbers minus integers so that x is greater than 0, right? So any way you could write. But the idea here is that you have to exclude all the integers from the domain, correct? And all real values greater than 0 will be part of our domain, correct? So that is our answer. So I hope this is absolutely clear. Now let's move on and take the last example for domain of greatest integer function related function. Now we need to find domain of f of x which is equal to 1 over square root of greatest integer function square minus greatest integer function minus 12. Now clearly, within square root, we should have everything which is non-negative. Since it is in denominator, it should be greater than 0 also. So the condition here is that x square minus x minus 12 should be greater than 0, right? Now you could factor this 4 times 3, 4 positive, 4 negative, 3 positive, so we get x minus 4 times x plus 3 greater than 0. Now I prefer to sketch this always as we did earlier. So it's kind of a parabola. Let's just sketch it first and then we'll figure out the other values. Fortunately for integers we get the same value so so at minus 3 and at, well, let me not write uh, minus 3 straight away. So we get here, what we get here is that this part should be greater than, this should be on this side. Do you see that? It's on this side. And here we are going to be on the left side of that 0, right? So at minus 3 it is 0. And at 4, this is 0, correct? So this is at 4. Now what we're trying to say here is that, let me rewrite. This part is kind of tricky. We're trying to say here is that the greatest integer function, x, is less than minus 3, right? And we're saying that greatest integer function, x, is greater than 4, not equal to 4. Do you get the idea? So when it is not equal to 4, it has to be greater than 4. That means x has to be greater than 5. Do you, do you get the idea? If I write 4.5, it will be 4. So this is a very tricky part, which I wanted to emphasize on. So greatest integer function greater than 4 really means that x is greater than 5. Does this make sense? Because 4 is going to make it 0 and you cannot have 0 here, right? So, so zeros are not possible. It has to be greater than. Perfect. On the left side, that's fine. So it is x will be less than minus 3. That will work, correct? So that is how we get our answer for the given question. So our answer is x is less than minus 3 or x greater than 5 for x belonging to real numbers, correct? 
So I hope this point is clear. Many times in multiple choice question, you can get confused between four and five. So take care of this part. Feel free to write your comments and share your views and I think you understood the whole process. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.